All right, this video is really just an extra practice video using these formulas, theorem 3.13. What happened to what happened to my green? What's going on over there? I just crossing it all out apparently. Um, let's do some problems. Example five. Find the derivative of the following. F of x equals the inverse tangent of x squared. So but all of these are just chain rule. Chain rule, chain rule, chain rule with these formulas. So derivative of tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. It actually might be a little useful to just copy it down when you're doing these problems. Derivative of inverse tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Well, we don't have x anymore, so when we take f prime, chain rule says take the derivative of the outside function, 1 over 1 plus x squared, that's the derivative of the outside function. Leave the inside the same, and multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Then we just simplify a little bit. It's 2x over 1 plus x to the fourth. And again, if you're curious about checking your work, you can always plot these functions and use what we know about derivatives and the original functions, or you can calculate some tangent lines. Um, again, like, uh, um, one of the ways that you could do this, right, is what if we want to look at the tangent line at one or at X equals zero, it'd be Y minus the inverse tangent of zero, which is zero equals a slope at zero, oh, which is zero, right? This says, uh, this should be a tangent line at zero, y equals just zero. Is that right? <laughs> um, inverse tangent of x squared. Yep. It has a horizontal tangent line at x equals zero, right? So you can see that, again, here's the equation of our tangent line. Not a very exciting point, but we could plug in some other points and find other tangent lines. This is what our function looks like, which is kind of weird. All right, so uh, you could do, always do that to check your answers. Part B wants us to look at h of x equals x squared times the inverse sine of x. The last one required us to use a chain rule. This one's gonna require us to use a product rule. Let's have this be our f. And this be our g? Well, for the product rule, we need f and f prime. So this is f. This is f prime. This is g. And from our last video, we know that this is g prime. Um, I always get these confused. But you can always check. 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay. Well, then we know that it's just f prime g plus fg prime, and just plug it all in. f prime is 2x times g, which is inverse sine of x, plus f, which is x squared, times inverse sine, whoa, so, times g prime is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And you can clean this up a little bit, but honestly, there's not that much that you can do. Um, I would write my final answer like this. There's a small chance that the book tries to get a common denominator or combine these in other w weird ways. But this is how I would end it. I think the book would probably end it this way as well. There's nothing really that you can do from here that makes much sense. All right, last one of the video. Let's say we have a position function, inverse tangent of one over t, and t is bigger than or equal to one half. And uh, we want the velocity function, s prime of t. And again, we're gonna need the derivative of inverse tangent. So sometimes, again, like I said in part a, it really can be useful to remember what these derivatives are. 
having it right here, as opposed to having, fl having to flip back in your notes and copy it over, just having it right next to the problem, a lot of times makes it a lot easier to evaluate problems. So this is gonna be another chain rule because there's a function on the outside, there's a function on the inside. So derivative of the outside function is one over one plus that thing squared. Inside stays the same. And we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Again, the derivative of that inside function is the derivative of t to the negative first power. Remember your negative exponents. And we use the power rule here. It's negative t to the negative second power. And again, we can actually, we can clean this one up quite a bit. <laughs> this one might be a little messy. This is one over one plus one over t squared times, let's put that negative in front and write this as one over t squared. Multiply fractions just multiplies their denominators, which means we're gonna distribute this. Negative one over one times t squared is t squared. t squared times one over t squared, those cancel out, it's one. Oh, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny how it works out because this is really just the derivative of negative inverse tangent. We're almost back to where we started up here. All right, and that's our derivative. That's all this video is. You should uh, now be prepared for anything, uh, anything you have to do. Let me know if you have questions and bye-bye. Uh,